My name's Chris Maurer. I, I live in uh, Houston, Texas. I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative. In fact, I consider Ronald Reagan to be the greatest president in my lifetime, if not our greatest president ever. Even people who disagreed with his policies, I think, respected the fact that you know, he, he made it clear what he wanted to do and he endeavored to do it and he had a certain amount of respect. I think he was singularly uh, responsible for the uh, fall of the Soviet Union and I think he did a wonderful job reviving the American economy as well as America's pride and, and stature in the world. I've been like, well, I was a sophomore, so I must have been 19 or 20 at the University of Wisconsin. I just came across an article or something in a textbook on circumcision and all of a sudden it just dawned on me, you know, what had happened that day back when I was three or four years old. I'd gone to the public health department for an immunization and heard screaming coming on and on and on. Well, I just remember thinking at the time, boy, that must be really a big kid in there. That must be somebody 10 years old maybe because it was just so loud and it went on and on and on. And it was you know, a large waiting room. And of course, there's the door is shut from the where the waiting room adjoins the uh, uh, doctor's offices. And then you know, down the hall, there was another closed door. So the baby was in the examining room which door was closed and then a little hallway and then that door was closed and we were out in the waiting room and it was just it was it was just uh, a horrific having to having to listen to that finally the the door opened and a woman walked out carrying a baby in a, in a white blanket and there were tears running down the mother's eyes as she briskly walked out of the out of the out of the uh, public health department and it was my time to go in for my immunization, and needless to say, I was a little bit reluctant to, uh, to, to walk through the door that the baby had just come out of. And I just was convinced that you know, that was never going to happen to any, any, any baby boy that I had, and it wasn't. See, in 2009, I saw uh, George Ann Chapin on MSNBC with, at the, I guess it was the AIDS conference in Atlanta, and she was Nancy Schneiderman, a medical host from MSNBC was the moderator and there was a pediatrician and George Ann was debating the pediatrician. I thought, well, that's what I've always thought. That's what I've always said in private conversations. And so I started donating a little bit of money to Intact America and to No Cirque and talked to Marilyn Milos. And I got a call from a friend of mine asking me if uh, I would appear on Fox News. And I said, well, sure. And I'm thinking, well, it must be a week or two from now. And I said, well, well when? Well, tonight. That was very odd in, in retrospect. So the host sat me down at, at this desk and pointed to this bank of monitors and said, look right here. And, you know, we're going to be starting shortly. And then she walked off with the, the doctor into another room beyond, you know, in another area, the door shut. So I'm sitting there all by myself in this cavernous room, you know, just cooling my heels, sitting there by myself, nervous, and uh, then the monitors all go on, and, and I, I'm not quite sure. I'm looking at myself in one monitor, and there's other things that are going on. I'm not quite sure where to look, and 10, 9, 8, 7, etc., and all of a sudden we're on the air, as far as I know. Circumcision is medically unnecessary, painful, and risky, but some experts say there is a medical benefit. In tonight's Fox & Focus, is there really a need for boys to be circumcised? We're joined by Dr. Stephen Canfield, Program Director of Urology at UT Health Medical School and Chief of Urology at LBJ General Hospital, and also lawyer and child rights activist Chris Maurer. He's from the group National Organization of circumcision. Well, we talked in the, in the parking lot for a while. He, he was actually not really pro-circumcision. He was more or less just circling the wagons and spouting the party line. And he basically made a comment about how, in a, on the air, about how circumcision decreases the risk of HIV by 50 percent. Doctor, I'll give you the last word on this. Sure. In addition to penile cancer, there's the prevention of the spread of HIV. In mm. fact, uh, three large randomized trials have been done in Africa, which clearly showed when the data was combined that circumcision in heterosexual men reduced the risk of HIV development by 50 percent. That's huge. And out in the parking lot, he said, well, those studies in Africa have no applicability to the, to the United States. And those people in Africa, they've got a tr uh, tremendous epidemic of AIDS and they're just grasping at straws, is what he said. I mean, then he went on to say that uh, obstetricians 
have no business doing circumcisions and that performing circumcisions on infants without anesthesia is barbaric. He probably didn't want to offend any of his colleagues there at his hospital by, of course he wasn't, he answered the questions he was asked in his defense. He wasn't asked those questions on the air, but he certainly didn't volunteer that information either. I sent out that video to a lot of clients and associates and family members and, you know, I, I haven't received any, uh, any negative feedback from anyone. I was a little surprised by that actually. Some of the women in my office were like, well, you know, I, I had my child when I was 20 and I just didn't know any better and I was young and I, I didn't know anything. They were apologetic about what, what they had done. So I, I, think it is, I think it is changing. We teach our kids about peer pressure and if everyone's jumping in the lake with you, but yet a lot of parents don't apply those principles to themselves. At least when it comes to the issue of circumcision, they do it because everybody else is doing it. If an 18-year-old wants to be circumcised, I don't care, that's his business, but this circumcision of minors to me is just, is just unacceptable. And these health benefits, you know, if, these, if there really are these health benefits, then make that, make that presentation to a person when he's 18. If these benefits really exist, you'll have men standing in line to be circumcised. And quite frankly, I think the reason they do it to babies is because they know they'd never be able to persuade an adult to consent. From what I understand, there's a misrepresentation to men being made that they're receiving a surgical vaccine. And so these men are consenting, but it's, it's based on intentional misrepresentation by these healthcare providers that are receiving massive amounts of funding from the United States government as well as from the Gates Foundation and other private organizations. I like to think that people are well-intentioned and, and they mean well, that nobody's you know, intentionally pulling the wool over men's eyes, but I'm, I, I don't really know. I think people sometimes get deluded into believing that what they're doing is right without really examining it. And uh, so I can't really speak to the motivation of the pro circers in Africa. I mean, there is a problem with HIV, obviously, but that's either through you know, abstinence or use of condoms or monogamy. I mean, that's, that's the solution to it, not as, as the pro circers you know, jokingly talk about whacking foreskins. I mean, that's just unacceptable. We have the moral high ground, we have the rational arguments, we have the medical basis, so the pro circers really have little, if anything, to rely on other than misinformation and uh, that needs to be exposed. And so to the extent I can help with that, I look forward to doing that. I usually keep uh, some circumcision literature in my bag with me and when I see a pregnant woman, I just hand her a brochure and normally I get one or two responses. Well, I'm having a girl, in which case I say, well, give this to one of your friends who's having a boy or I get the response of thank you. So it's like any, any little difference you can make, some baby someday will give you a silent thank you.